In this video, we're going to be creating a progress bar with CSS that looks like this. And um, we're going to use transitions as well to make sure that when we do come to animate this, perhaps with JavaScript or something, we can actually make it, you know, look relatively smooth. So you can see at the moment that I've got width here just set of 74%. Uh, this is basically what the bar looks like. I'll zoom in just a little bit. We've got sort of like a, an outline here with a little bit of shadow in line just to give it a sort of 3D effect. And then we've just got this solid, nice blue color bar here. So that's what it looks like. And when we go ahead and animate it, you just see now the transition will take place as I change the width. So I'm just removing the width down like this and back up again. And we get this lovely smooth transition that looks really, really nice um, across most browsers. Now, if you don't have transitions, um, you know, within a browser, for example, an older version of IE, this doesn't matter because it will still look exactly the same in uh, older browsers. You just won't see the smooth effect that you get when you transition. So this will look the same. Uh, it will function the same. Uh, the, you know, it'll, it will look absolutely fine. You just won't get the transition. But the tra transition is just an added enhancement here. So let's jump straight over to our code and start writing the code out for this. Okay, so over to our text editor. We're going to start completely from scratch here. So we're going to go ahead and define a doc type here, an HTML5 doc type, and then use our HTML tags to wrap the entire page. Uh, we'll go ahead and give this a head as well, and we'll create a title inside of here. So we'll just give that a title of CSS progress bar or something. Okay, so the next thing to do is go ahead and create the body. This is where our content will sit. This is where our container will sit. Uh, we're going to create a container with a width of 400 pixels just to contain this, um, because naturally what this progress bar will do is fill 100% the width of the element is contained within. So let's go ahead and just define this container. We'll just use a div here and give this a class of container. Go ahead and end that. And then within here, this is where our bar is going to sit. So if we just type in bar there, preview the page, and that's what we that's what we get at the moment. Nothing special. So we'll now go ahead and link in a style sheet, and then we'll go ahead and create that in a moment. So we say link rel equals style sheet. That's what this is. And then the location of the style sheet. Now we haven't created a style sheet yet. So let's go ahead and create a new document and we'll go ahead and save this in a new folder within this directory within CSS and we'll call this main.css. Okay, so now what we'll do is go ahead and define the container styles and all we need to do here is give this a width of 400 pixels. So this container will now be 400 pixels wide. We can then go ahead and refresh and you can see now that we should, um, if we refresh, uh, of course, we need to link our style sheet in. So if we do CSS forward slash main dot CSS, that will link our styles in. And then we have a 400 pixel container. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and start writing the styles for the bar. But what we need to do first is sort of work out what kind of markup we need to add here for this to actually work. Well, we're going to have two elements, uh, a bar and a bar fill. So bar will be the outer element that we saw, the grey sort of background with a shadow. And then the bar fill will be the coloured bar in the, in the middle, so blue for example, or red or green or whatever colour you want to give it, uh, that, will, that will sort of fill that element. So the first thing we're going to do is define the bar itself. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give this a span. This isn't going to be a div element, it's just going to be a span. Um, there's no real particular reason, but one of the reasons, I guess, is that a, the, a, uh, the bar is just really a sort of, you know, that the point of it being there is just that it's a fill bar. So it makes a lot more sense to have a span within here. You can give this a div, it doesn't really matter. Uh, or this can be a div if you want, it doesn't really matter, but it sort of helps to visually separate this as well. So we'll go ahead and give it, give this a span. And this is going to be a class of bar fill. And you can, of course, target bar uh, with a span element, but it's probably not a good idea to just say, you know, bar span when we come to our CSS selectors. Um, we'll call this bar fill in case this needs to be another element. So we'll give the sort of flexibility there. Okay, so the first thing to do, I guess, now is then just style out the actual bar itself. So like I said, we're going to give this a width of 100%, and what that's going to do is just fill the container. Um, and uh, we'll go ahead and give this a background. 
and I've chosen the light grey colour EEE. Um, and if we go ahead and just give this some padding quickly, that will give us this element on the page that we can sort of take a look at. So we now know that we've got this container, we've got the bar in the middle, which is the green highlighted area there. And that's taking up 100% width of the container that it's in. Uh, and obviously we've got that background on there as well. And now the height of the bar will be determined by the fill. So we'll, we'll create the fill in a moment and that will go ahead and, and do this. So before we do anything else here, let's go ahead and just start to play around with the fill element. So we want to give this a height that will determine, you know, how high this is and, and what it will look like. So we can say something like height 20 pixels. Um, what we then need to do is say display block because we've given this a span uh, element which uh, by default is an inline. So uh, if we just get rid of this, you'll see we can check this out here. Um, we've got a display of inline here under the computed styles. So we need to go ahead and give that a um, a display of block. So that will allow us to define the height and the padding if we need any or anything like that. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and give this a background and see what it looks like. So I've chosen corn flower blue, which is quite a nice color, like this. So you can't actually see anything at the moment. Um, so let's take a look. Ah, there we go. That's because I've spelled that wrong. So if we go ahead and take a look now. So now we've got the, if we just zoom in here, we've now got this bar and then the bar fill in the middle, uh, this nice blue color. But it's still not looking right. It doesn't... It, sort of just looks like a uh, long blue rectangle at the moment. So we need to go ahead and give this a couple of adjustments. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I'll just give this a width of, you know, say 60% or something like that, just so we can see how it looks when it's shorter. So we're not filling the entire length of this. Uh, we'll also go ahead and give this a border radius of three pixels. That will just soften the edges of that a little bit. So that's what it looks like now. If we zoom in, you can see it's starting to look a little bit nicer with the softer edges here. And we can start adding the shadow to this area as well uh, in a moment. So um, if we go ahead and under the bar, maybe give this a border radius as well because we want the whole thing to sort of you know match up if you like. So if I refresh now, you can see that the whole thing's got a border radius and uh, it just generally looks a little bit nicer, uh, a bit sort of easier on the eye if it's got that radius in there. The last thing we want to do though is give this, uh, before we do the transitions, is give this a little bit of a shadow and this is just going to define this a lot nicely and it's going to be a lot easier to sort of, you know, look at. Um, so with the bar, let's go ahead and give this a box shadow. Now we're going to give this an inset shadow because obviously by default if we were to give this a shadow it would be on the outside. We want to give this an inset shadow. And what we want to do is define the X and the Y axis which are going to be 0 and 1. And then we want to define the blur or the spread. And that's going to be three pixels. Now if we take a look at that, we can very clearly see how this has how this looks. So um, you know, it's it's uh filled out, you know, this sort of top area. Uh, the reason I chose zero pixels for the X axis is because if it's one, it sort of fills this part here. I want that to sort of be in there a little bit and give more of a shadow on this side. Um, so that's how it looks without, you know, with a harsh line. Obviously not very nice at the moment. But if we go ahead and we uh, define an RGBA value, so we've got red, green, blue and alpha. We're going to say 0, 0, 0, 0. That's for black. And then I'm going to say 0.2, which is the alpha value. And that's just going to give it a nice soft, um, you know, a light color here. So, so some opacity in there and that's sort of defined that really nicely without looking too much like we've given that a box shadow which is nice so that's the visual side of things done but what we now want to do is apply the transition um, because if 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 you know when we looked at the first part of the tutorial I changed the width here this is very sort of rigid and very solid as I move the width up and down inside my element inspector what we want to do is go ahead and give this a transition so we apply the transition to the bar fill and uh, we use the transition property like this and we go ahead and define what uh, property we want to transition. We then define the speed and I'm going to say 0.8 seconds and then we're going to give the sort of ease here. So this is just ease. So we've got a transition here. Um, this does at the time of recording require the 
WebKit prefix, uh, vendor prefix for some browsers or some older, slightly older versions of browsers. I think Safari at the time of recording. So we just do that, but with the WebKit vendor prefix. And now what's going to happen is when we refresh and alter this value, you'll see that we get this nice smooth action as we go up and down with the values. So they, you know, depending on how fast your progress bar is moving, you'll get that lovely smooth motion. So that's basically it for the progress bar. We've built a nice visually looking uh, progress bar with a nice little shadow here. We've given some border radius. This works perfectly in all other browsers back to IE7. Uh, it works really, really nicely. You just won't get the border radius, the box shadow and the transition, which is fine because it still looks fine. Um, it's still easy to see. Now, if we want to play around with this a little bit, we can do. So let's go ahead and just set the um, progress bar. Now, this isn't necessary. It's just a bit of fun in the console. I'm going to set the width to 0%. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to muck around in the console and uh, play around with this. So I'm going to say var bar. So sort of setting a variable here. Uh, this is going to be document dot query selector. And I'm going to select the element, so bar fill. So now that we've got bar, that's that's basically the span within it. And what we can actually do here is we can go ahead and maybe set some kind of interval or something like that. So first of all, I'm going to set a width to zero. Uh, these are all globals. We're just playing around here. So I've set a width to zero and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create an interval here. And I'm going to go ahead and give a callback in here. And this is going to be every 50 milliseconds. Now within this interval, what's what's going to happen here is the width is going to increment. So I'm going to say width equals width plus one. I'm then going to come down here and I'm going to go ahead and set the uh, width of the bar. So I'm going to say bar.style.width equals, and then it's something percent. So this is width percent. That's basically all we need to do. And then down here, I'm going to go ahead and create a little if statement. And this is going to be if width is greater than or equal to 100, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clear interval on um, the interval, which is the one we just created there. And I'm also going to go ahead, if I just bring this down, just to make it look a little bit easier to read. I'm going to set the width to zero again. So what that's going to do is it's going to basically make our progress bar go all the way up as it may do, you know, if you were controlling this JavaScript, when it hits 100%, um, width is set back to zero and the interval is cleared. So we can go ahead and run that again if we want, um, you know, providing we set width back to zero again, but uh, that's basically that. So um, yeah, I mean, that's a little bit of fun, but that's basically how the uh, element looks. To go ahead and set that back to 60%, we can just see that now in all its glory. So that's um, a CSS progress bar and how we might animate it using JavaScript.